Hey guys, this is Nefarious411, and welcome to episode 32 of my modded survival series. In the uh, previous episode, we were able to um, create our big reactor, and as you can see in between episodes, I went ahead and straightened it up a little bit, um, even created um, this uh, capacitor bank right here, um, several more, um, because I did have a couple in the uh, last episode. I can't remember how many I had, but now we're... Uh, Got, we got, what is this, eight capacitor banks, which uh, is a total of 200 million RF. Um, right now, I have it connected to both the other uh, reactor um, up there. And I also have the uh, lava generators. And yet again, <laughs> the uh, lava is drained out. So I would have to uh, go into the other uh, nether to uh, replenish that, move the, uh, the pump into a new place. So hopefully after today's build, we don't have to do that. Um, I only left this here um, because in between episodes, I didn't want the, uh, the reactor to be running nonstop because that would be a complete waste of the, uh, the fuel. Um, so I left it in here. And if I come over here, um, we still have 41 ingots um, ready to go. That doesn't include the uh, yellow right that's actually in the uh, core um, this is only in excess to uh, what it has in the uh, the reactor itself and i went ahead and brought a few things down cleared out some space because today i actually want to expand upon this and get some computer craft working uh, making sure that we have something that's able to control the amount of power and whether or not the uh, computer or the uh, reactor is going to turn on and for this i went ahead and constructed uh, monitors and a uh, computer um, so if I take a look at monitor um, it's real simple it's just gold around a glass pane and for that I'll need 12 because I need two sets of monitors and for a computer um, I think we could have used the uh, the other computer the other uh, gray one but I went ahead and went with the advanced um, just for the other uh, color um, but I think you can use the other it's really not too much cheaper I mean it's gold versus um, stone so it's really your choice um, but I would uh, recommend going with the advanced computer in case you wanted to get a, a color displays and stuff like that um, but then I also created wire modems which is basically um, stone around a redstone um, I don't think you can use wireless on this um, because I don't think it works that way um, at least with the um, computer craft application or program that I'm going to put on here and then uh, some networking cable cable which is stone surrounding a uh, redstone so very 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 simple so let me go ahead and run down not to that one again I need to fix that <laughs> I keep going to the wrong one but I went ahead and created this little um, entryway I do have the uh, magnum torch um, because it's still dark. I haven't figured out any kind of uh, lighting options for this. I do want to uh, get up these uh, glowstone nooks at some point, as I did upstairs. So eventually we'll uh, take a look at lighting options. But for now, let's go ahead and get started with this. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to place my monitors in the wall because with this program that I'm using for my reactor control, um, it uses, I think, up to two sets of monitors, and they have to be three by two. Um, so it actually detects all of that, and I don't think it, the uh, computer craft program will actually work unless it's that configuration. And I have my uh, reactor computer port right there. So let me go ahead and place my computer down. I'm gonna put it right here so that I can access that, and I will show you um, something that uh, can cover that it doesn't have to be an open area right there but uh, so all we have to do is start placing these modems on all of the devices and I'm just gonna place them right there and there so now we have our networking cable let's go ahead and connect all of that up um, there we go I guess uh, shift right click will prevent it from uh, opening up stuff that you don't want it to. And there we go. 
I could probably clean the stuff up later, but I don't think the uh, networking cable on Computercraft um, supports facades or um, covers or anything like that. So now we just need to right click on all of the modems, make sure that the uh, ring is red, and that will allow me to know that it's connected to the network. And there we go. So you can see from the um, chat window that we have monitor two and three, um, computer three and four. I think that's just uh, from both sides. And then the uh, the big reactor right there. Cool. So let me run around here, open up the computer, and the uh, very first thing that you'll want to do is do a label set reactor. There we go. It doesn't have to be reactor, it just needs to be anything. That way, whenever you uh, pick up the other uh, computer or you accidentally break it, it's not going to lose the information that's on there. So the, uh, the next thing that I want to do is go ahead and grab the startup scripts. There we go, and all I have to do is a paste bin get this little code, and I will uh, go ahead and put this in the, uh, the description w along with the uh, references to the uh, GitHub site. This is uh, Sandal, I believe. Uh, the, uh, the person that created this um, computer pra craft program and give it a name called Startup. And if I look at Startup, it basically has all of the information. And what this will actually do is allow you to um, run this and it will grab everything else that it needs. So it'll actually check to see if it has the uh, computer uh, computer craft uh, reactor control program and it'll do the uh, pastebang get on that. That way you can uh, always get a new version um, if it's ever updated um, and then that will be pretty sweet. So all I have to do really is restart the program there we go, it starts up, and you can see that I have two monitors up right now. Um, the uh, left monitor is going to show the uh, current status of the other uh, reactor, uh, shows the uh, current energy buffer, so we can see that it's uh, 50.9, which is pretty accurate. And um, let's see, I'm not sure what the uh, reactivity is. I think that's from this right here. So how heavily irradiated the core is, I'm not sure what that does. But um, you can see that it's on um, offline right now, and I think by default, so let me go ahead and stop this. Um, that's just holding Control T, and it'll terminate the program. And you can see that just by grabbing the one startup script, it added several files in here. So let's take a look at some of these. So let me look at reactor control.log. And this is basically the other uh, log. So you can see what it's been doing when it's uh, doing certain activities. It'll probably have the start and stop, um, things like that. And what else do we have? Um, reactor options. So this one's pretty important. So basically, the way this works is it doesn't check like the uh, the power monitor. It doesn't check the uh, vibrant capacitor banks here. It has no idea those even exist. It bases it on the amount of energy in the uh, energy buffer. So there is a threshold that you can set. So if you want the reactor to turn on whenever it reaches like 30%, um, it'll go ahead and turn on, and then whenever it gets to, say, 90%, it'll turn off. And that's basically um, all there is to it. Very similar to the uh, power uh, monitor control with uh, monitoring storage. Um, so then it'll uh, keep draining out because I have my power tap right there draining all of the other uh, power that it gets in into the uh, capacitor banks. So let's say that I'm using the machines up there, it starts draining this, it'll actually be pulling out of the, uh, the buffer of the reactor. And once it gets down to 30%, it's like, hey, I need more power. So it goes ahead and turns it on. So if I look at this, and this looks like it's at 15% and 85%. So you want to uh, not do 100% right here because if you do 100%, this will actually lose a little bit. 
Um, so you want to do like 80 to 90 percent because if you remember from the uh, last episode, it's going to continue um, creating RF while it still has core heat. So if you do 100 percent, obviously there's going to be some loss. So doing it 85 percent is probably good enough for me. So I am going to exit this. And what else do we have? Um, big reactors, reactor two options. So this is uh, named from whatever computer craft named it whenever it did the search. And uh, from the uh, the chat, you can see that with the uh, the modem over here, it was named Big Reactors Reactor Two. Um, so th it's named after that device. And this is basically telling it all of the different things, um, telling it that it's actively cooled, which is true because we're cooling it with this. Whenever we get into uh, turbines, um, at some point, um, probably don't need it for my base right now because I don't need that kind of power. Or if I start running out of yellowite, I could probably do a, a passively cooled um, reactor. Um, so here you would just uh, change all of these things accordingly. Um, so it can monitor temperatures, the uh, deal with the uh, control rod levels, things like that. So this little application is actually really nice. If you ever want to look at the actual code um, that it uses to uh, run this, it has all of the, uh, the programmer information up here. Um, so kudos to them for creating such a great um, little act uh, application for reactor control but it has the uh, change log. Once you get past that, you can actually start looking at the code to see how they're doing it. And you'll understand why. I didn't really want to uh, write this myself and it's still going even though I stopped pushing the button um, because it's pretty complicated. I didn't want to have to write this myself. So I am really glad that there are people out there that have the, uh, the time and energy to uh, devote into something like this. So let me go ahead and restart the computer and it goes ahead and grabs the uh, the latest version of the uh, the reactor control and you can see it's uh, currently offline and this is a, a touch screen so you should be able to uh, right click on where it says offline and now it's online very cool you can see that it's starting to uh, generate energy and we can see the uh, energy buffer going up that is really really cool and you can uh, turn it offline right there I think you can also change the uh, percentage of the fuel rods um, because if you remember um, up at the other uh, top we have the other uh, fuel rod um, what are these called do 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 control rods and that's basically um, dipping the other uh, control rods down into the uh, yellow right to uh, produce energy and there's equations to know the uh, the best um, settings based upon the uh, the um, temperature and everything like that. So another reason to really not get into your own um, computer craft stuff or even the other uh, manual configuration. So if you have the time and energy, feel free to do that. But otherwise, I think this is a really cool setup and it's going to uh, work out for me uh, pretty well. So yeah, I hope that you like that. So um, I want to finish up this little area. I did leave this area open for a uh, turbine if we choose to do that. And we have other walls that we have that we can uh, also put uh, turbines, but that will definitely be in the other future. Um, so what I want to do is first turn on NEI and Carpenter's Blocks have garage doors. So I actually want to look at this and it looks like I need some more of these carpenters blocks. And I did create the other recipes in here um, because I'm starting another project which we'll see in the, uh, the near future. Um, but I needed a lot of uh, carpenters blocks for it. So there we go. And let me just grab 16 and see where that takes me. So let me jump back down here. So let's try to clean this area up a little bit. Eh, that's kind of weird looking. Um, let me run upstairs and grab my carpenter's hammer real quick. I forgot to uh, grab that. And I think I can uh, change designs on this fairly easily. Carpenter's blocks are really, really cool. And let me grab the blocks that I'm going to use. 
for the other carpenter's blocks because you can basically uh, mask um, any of these blocks with whatever colors that you want or tiles. Eh, not a big fan of that. That's kind of cool. I kind of wish I had textures though, connected textures. Um, glass, I don't like that one, don't like that one. Well, I think that's as close as I can get. <laughs> it's not great, but it's not terrible either. Um, I guess if I put it um, right here, um, I would have been able to uh, blend it in a little bit more. But basically, I can just right click and I have access to my computer. Right click it again, it closes down. And that is pretty, pretty nice. Guess what I could do? I wonder what this would do. Yeah, I might keep it like that because it was connecting to the other blocks behind it. But without those blocks, or if I put a different block maybe, it won't have the uh, connected textures right there and make it look weird. Yeah. I mean, you can tell that there's something there. I might end up moving this over. I just didn't want to get it too close to here because I think there's a... I think that you have to have these modems in different blocks, so I wouldn't be able to do that unless I... Well, no, that wouldn't work either. I was thinking if I move the computer here, but then this modem would be in the same block. I could move the uh, reactor port up one, and that might work. Uh, maybe this will grow on me. I may not even notice it, so it's probably not that big of a deal. <clears throat> so I should be able to uh, do it on these as well. And the, uh, the really nice thing is, is it only used um, one per block, um, or one per Y level. Um, so if I had this really high up, how far does it go? Yeah, <laughs> these are cool because you can actually uh, extend these all the way down and it only took one of these doors, which is kind of nice. So let me break that. There we go. And let me put these blocks in the place. Hmm. I'm running into the same situation on this side. I guess that's not terrible. What would it look like with glass? Eh, no. Don't like the glass. If it were dark, eh, still no. I'm just going to go with that one right there, and I think that looks pretty good. So yeah, now we have a, a good power room situation going on here. And I think that is uh, going to work for us. So let me uh, let me actually deal with my travel anchor issue because I do not like having to look around because whenever I'm in this room, I typically just want to go down to the other levels. So to do that, I want to look at elevators. So let me go ahead and create a couple of elevators and. I'm hoping that it's not too far away um, from the levels down below and I might have to run down there real quick figure out how close I am to the other uh, wall and do this one first this might be an okay area and let me come straight up oh yeah Oh, I forgot about this. Well, that's probably actually convenient now that I'm thinking of it because I'm constantly having to uh, run over here. I could just close these off now. I think that would uh, be beneficial. Nice. So we can uh, close off that little thing. And if I hold down shift, I get down to the power room. Jump. I'm up here. Yay. So now, I don't know if it'll go through that block, but I do need to, uh, <laughs> I need to get back up there. Um, let me grab my travel anchor. Might move these, or I might keep them there. I'll probably keep at least the, uh, the uh, processing room one here, because I do like being able to go through the uh, different areas, and yep, this is yet another project I started and didn't finish, so don't look at the room!
I will uh, finish that at some point. But let me go ahead and grab another elevator. It looks like I ran out of wool, which is fine. Okay, cool. That does let me do that. Nice! Alright. And you can see that my farm's been doing pretty well. I did have to turn it all off uh, because it was draining a lot of power and really not doing anything. But I should be able to have all the string that I want. There we go. And I think that automatically put it back in the barrel. And let me go ahead and grab some wool. There we go. And I need another elevator, please. Oops, not elevator. I need an ender pearl for you. And I am going to run down to this area. And this might be a little bit more complicated because it doesn't really align with the room upstairs. Um, let me see. I think it would be right there. Let's see if I can get in here real quick. Okay, cool. That does work. Um, yeah, I might have to change this room out a little bit. Otherwise, the elevator is not going to work. Otherwise, I'll just leave the other uh, travel anchor there. I'll leave this here for now while we're going to do other things. All right, cool. So that works really well. So, <laughs> even though that was a little side trip, uh, side track right there, I want to work on getting fuel down to our reactor. So let me create a couple of barrels. I already got one right there. Um, I guess I don't need two. I'm probably going to do the same thing as I have here with import buses. So let me make sure that I don't have any yellowite in the system. There we go. And I am going to put all of that yellow right in here. There we go. And I want to run back here, and see what my situation is. Since this is one, two, three, four, five channels right there, um, I think I still have enough to do a storage bus on the back of. Oh, what's going on? All right, I'm missing Fluix crystals. Um, yeah, and that's another thing that I need to uh, to deal with is I uh, get the uh, the Fluix crystals automated. It's a sticky piston. Emmy import bus. Well, let me uh, figure out which one of these recipes is not using a pure crystal and uh, change that out to use the pure crystal and I will be right back. Alright, there we go. It was because of my um, Fluix dust. Um, it was using a uh, one of those other Fluix crystals but I changed it to a pure and now I should have a, a storage bus coming pretty soon. Eventually. Today. I think. Um, thought, crafting status, why you no work, scheduled two, is this not going to work? You know, that might not work. Can you use pure to grind that up? No. Well, there's your problem. Um, okay. Crystal. Well, <laughs> I guess I need to change that recipe back for some reason. Well, I can create one of these, and one of these can be created into four. Wow. Is that lossy? No. Yeah, that's lossy. Well, for the time being, I guess I can uh, create one of these. And how do I get this back out? There we go. There. Let me grind up a couple of those manually. Yeah, I need to uh, fix that part of the system. Hopefully that worked. Ah, 
probably gonna have to cancel that. Um, yeah, you're confused now. All right, so let me create that back. Um, that was a storage bus. I think that was all I needed. There we go. Let me grab that recipe out while I still remember it. And change this basically with a crystal, but I need another one. Yeah, that's a big pain. I'll have to do the math on that just to see if that's uh, lossy or not. Because I don't want to have to uh, lose resources just because of that. And where do you go? Um, you go in Sag Mill, right? There you go, guy. Cool. Storage bus. Back to what we were doing. There we go. <clears throat> Sorry about that. And we should be able just to run back here. And I don't know which one I want this on. Um, I mean, looking at here, this is really just farming stuff, but it'll eventually be uh, more things lining this wall, I think. So let me do the bottom left. And that's already got the cable, and we should be good. That's online, and we are good. We are golden. Sweet. All right, and... Let me just pull this guy up real quick. Six out of 32 channels, and I think this is sharing with the uh, clusters down there, if I'm correct. Six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so it's got its dedicated channel. It's very good to remember where you do things. <laughs> so let me go ahead and grab my storage upgrades, uh, my MK stuff. And I wonder, 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 what sh should I do on that? So MK1, MK2, I want at least one storage, and that'll be 128 stacks. Do I see myself getting up more than 128 stacks of Yellowrite? Um, probably not, and if I do, I can always um, upgrade that later. So let me go ahead and do the same thing here. So I need my MK1 and 2. There we go, and there we go. Thank you. 1, 2, storage upgrade. And now I need 2 B space. And fortunately, I already have them. And my tuning fork. And right now, I am just going to tune them together, and I did not realize that I put that in there. There we go. So let me go ahead and put a little bit of yellow right in here, just so that we can see it. And we can just tune that from here to here, and there we go. So now they're linked up. But in order to uh, carry this downstairs, I need to be able to use my dolly because otherwise it'll just break it and that's not gonna be good for anybody. So let me run down here. There we go. That's kind of close to the wall. I might move that away now that I'm thinking of it. And for now, I will place you right there. I can move you later. But now we should have at least the supply of yellowrite that's going to go into the reactor. And here should be as simple as hooking this guy up. Let me make sure that that one's on insert. There we go. And you always extract. And now you can see that it's running through and it's putting them in there. Nice. So that's going to keep it um, fully stocked with yellowrite. And how are we doing over here? So we have cyanite. And big reactors, they actually eject um, waste as in the form of cyanite. And we can definitely use these um, in the future. So what I want to do is pull all of the cyanite out into another barrel. I think that would be a good plan. So I do need another storage bus, and I'm hoping that this doesn't die, and good, we can do it. Because I am going to convert maybe the guy on the left 
to be the cyanite. That way it doesn't clog up my AE system and then it's available and I think that's the other uh, good thing about using barrels for your yellowite is so that if something goes wrong and your AE system is powered down you still have access to your yellowite um, without having to uh, do weird temporary measures to get your um, AE system back on. So let me go ahead and grab, eh, I guess I could just break that guy. Whew, that's hard to break. And I am just going to shove all of you guys in there. Nice. And now I already have the barrel and the upgrades, at least for one of these. Ah, come on. That's not what I wanted. Um, empty hand. There we go. Did that? Okay, that just cleared it. I was like, where did the thing go? All right, so let me get rid of you. Storage upgrade. So this is 128 stacks. I think that's correct. So now I need my MK1 and 2 over here too, as well. Thank you, thank you. And I will upgrade this guy. Same way. <clears throat> Storage, I still have one of these. B space. I need two of you guys, please. Dun, dun, dun. There's one, two, and tuning fork. There we go. You and you. Sweet. Wait, did I not get the. Oh, that's 64 stacks. Can I still put you on there? 128 stacks are. Okay, so now tune them together. This should work. Barrels are resonating together. There we go. Yay! All right. <clears throat> so now, storage bus. Let's go ahead and pop this baby on the back. Make sure that everything comes back online. We are running close to empty on the channels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have one channel left that we can put on this uh, normal glass cable. So we'll need to uh, probably upgrade that line at some point soon. But now I should be able just to bring this barrel downstairs. And I don't think it really mattered which barrel I, I resonated from. I think it'll still work. So if I put my tuning fork in there it should still be visible well I don't need to go up there you you get the point should still be visible upstairs uh, but this I actually want to hook in like so and I need to make sure that this is locked with cyanite so let me extract always and hopefully I can insert and it'll get cyanide in there, lock that barrel, lock that barrel, and we should be good. Sweet. All right, cool. So now we have both the input and output working. They're all on the green channel, it didn't really matter. I could have changed these a little bit um, so that these are on different channels, but eh, it's the same network and those are barrels that are locked, so I don't really have to worry about that. I'm probably still going to keep at least a stack in here because I I am still uncertain whether or not if this went through all of the yellowite um, if I would have a problem so I'm just going to keep a stack of yellowite here just in case and I think that is good let me run upstairs and just double check and there it is Nice. We should be able to see it in the AE system as well. And there we go. 50 cyanite. And that is not the right number. That means that there was some cyanite in the system before 
we uh, put the storage bus on. So now if I put that in there, it should all go in there. So yeah, another warning. I said this uh, previously whenever we were dealing with the storage buses. You have to make sure that all of the items that you're going to put in a storage bus is out of your drives. Otherwise, it's going to be taking up a slot for maybe one or two of that material. Um, so remove them all out of the system and you should be good. But I think that's... Uh, basically it for the uh, the big reactor stuff um, we should be able to uh, keep all of our power supplies up and uh, going but unfortunately it looks like we are out of time so i really hope that you enjoyed this episode and if you could uh, rate the video down below it'd be greatly appreciated and also if you like the series go ahead and hit that subscribe button but for now this is goodbye